So in this video, I want to give you an introduction to the beta-lactam antibiotics. So here you can see the favorite figure of antibiotics. So it shows a bacterial cell and all the major components that can be used as a target. One important target of bacteria is the cell wall, because eukaryotic cells do not even have a cell wall. Remember, prokaryotes have a very high osmotic pressure. So to prevent that they burst, they have this additional cell wall. And this serves as an ideal target of antibiotics. So we have two big classes of drugs that both inhibit the cell wall synthesis. So they both just inhibit the making of the cell wall. One important class of drugs are the so-called beta-lactam antibiotics. A second, much smaller class of drugs are the so-called glycopeptides, with the major example vancomycin, which also inhibits cell wall synthesis, but slightly different. So let's start talking about the beta-lactam antibiotics. Why are antibiotics referred as beta-lactam antibiotics? Because they have a beta-lactam ring, a four-membered ring. And you can find this ring in penicillins, cephalosporins, monobactams, and carbapenems. And these are the classes of antibiotics that are referred as beta-lactam antibiotics. I always like to think about penicillin being a house with an extra room. So the extra room is a beta-lactam ring, which is imp this important structure which is responsible for how these drugs work and also how bacteria get resistant against it. And there's always going to be some side chain, so you can think about it like having cable TV on this extra room. The cephalosporins are slightly different. It's just kind of a basement that is built onto this, this house. And so for the monobactams, unfortunately the house is not anymore here, so you're gonna left over with the extra room. And the carbapenems have also kind of the house with the extra room, but they just look slightly different to the penicillins. So the beta-lactam ring is responsible in two ways. Number one, that's how the drug works. So without this beta-lactam ring, there is no effect against bacteria. The other very important thing about this beta-lactam ring to know is that this is the most sensitive part of the molecule. And bacteria, unfortunately, know that. So they know that the beta-lactam ring is required for the antibiotic to work. So what bacteria like to do is just to destroy the beta-lactam ring because it's so sensitive. And this can be done with enzymes that the bacteria make, which are referred as beta-lactamases. So let's first talk about what is the mechanism of action of beta-lactam antibiotics. And they all work exactly the same because the beta-lactam ring does its job. As we already know, they are commonly referred as cell wall synthesis inhibitors. So their target is a cell wall. So what do they do with a cell wall? So when a bacteria is making its cell wall, it needs to make this peptidoglycan, which is a major component of the cell wall of, of bacteria. And so peptidoglycan, as the name already says, consists out of glycans or sugar chains, and then also peptide chains that cross-link these sugar chains. So if you want to look a little bit more in detail, so this sugar chain consists of alterating N-acetylmuramic acid and N-acetylglucosamine. And these are just these sugar chains that the bacteria is going to make. But as you can imagine, just sugar chains are not going to give the cell wall any rigidity. So what the bacteria does is it synthesizes some peptides onto this um, sugar chain and then an enzyme comes, which is called the transpeptidase, which are going to hook up this peptide chain with a so-called pentaglycyl unit and then these sugar molecules have been cross-linked. I have here listed the sequence of the amino acid that are kind of hooked on to this sugar molecule. So what happens if you have a beta-lactam antibiotic on board? So it turns out that the beta-lactam antibiotics inhibit exactly this cross-linking step that is facilitated by the enzyme transpeptidase. And it turns out that the beta-lactam antibiotics in a three-dimensional structure look a little bit like this d ala d ala that is kind of the target of the transpeptidase that this enzyme is going to recognize 
and try to link to this pentaglycyl unit. So because the transpeptidase thinks of a beta-lactam antibiotic being this DLA-DLA ending, it just binds to it and therefore inhibits the enzyme. People found that this transpeptidase is the target of the um, penicillins. They were so excited that they even kind of renamed the enzyme. And a lot of times you're going to see the name PBP, which stands for penicillin binding protein, which is nothing else than the transpeptidase. It's just a different name because the people were so excited to have found the target of penicillins. So the next thing that I want to address is where are these PBPs, these penicillin binding proteins or the transpeptidase, this enzyme that the beta-lactam antibiotics target. And it's very important to know that these PBPs are intercalated into the cell membrane. So remember, the cell membrane is around the cytosol and the, or the organelles of the bacteria, and the cell wall surrounds it. So if we administer a beta-lactam antibiotics, it's important to realize that this drug needs really to get to these PBPs. That means it needs to go through the cell wall of the bacteria to reach its target. And this, as you can already predict, is going to be different between gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria. This peptidoglycan layer of gram-positive bacteria is thick, but it's like a mesh, so it's not a barrier for drugs. So for gram-positive bacteria, it's not going to be a problem for our beta-lactam antibiotics to get through the cell wall and to, to target the PBPs. However, it's completely different for gram-negative bacteria, because remember, gram-negative bacteria have this additional outer membrane, which is a lipid bilayer. So again, if you're going to apply a beta-lactam antibiotics, the target is here, the PBPs in the inner membrane. So the drug needs to get through this lipid bilayer in, in order to get to its target. And as most of the antibiotics are pretty hydrophilic molecules, it's not going to be easy to get such a dense lipid bilayer. So the, so the only option that we have to get our drug to this PBP here is to use the so-called porin channels. So the bacteria have some channels for hydrophilic molecules for solutes being able to take up some important nutrients. And the drugs also can go through these porin channels. The problem is just the porin channels are pretty tight, so you cannot use have any bulky molecules are never going to get through. And furthermore, some bacteria just have very limited amount of this porin channel, so this can be another problem. 